Mini Minerva, providing enrichment and encouraging inquiry in a rapidly changing world. This week we have a special lecture for Learning Disability Awareness Week. Hi, my name is Ilham and I'm a mother and a carer of a 12 years old girl on spectrum. Ilham El Fen is a carer and disability activist. Her daughter Nada is on the autism spectrum. Ilham is the co-founder of a community group called Anna Huna that supports Muslim families of children with special needs. She was celebrated this year by the Royal Borough of Greenwich on International Women's Day for her work and community volunteering. What does the autism spectrum mean to you and Nada? Um, being on spectrum means your brain functions differently and your brain is uh, the master of your action. Uh, people on spectrum, uh, they are good at, at some stuff, very good at some stuff, normal in some stuff. When I don't, okay, I don't know how to explain how to say normal, but mm. uh, with an, an autistic person, their brains functions differently in different places depends on place on time on the mood you get some stuff that comes naturally to them all the time and most of the other stuff it depends on many other factors uh what things does uh, nada really love doing and what what are her really like keen interests i'll bring you <laughs> yay visual aids <laughs> we love a visual aid <laughs> My daughter loves art and crafts, being creative. Um, she keeps herself busy with different things. She likes drawing with glue. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. As you can see, wow. she lo loves, loves painting. <gasps> that is gorgeous. She, she, and she, she's very fast. She's very quick. She can wow. do this. She's done this in. 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Ilham, they're so beautiful. She, she can keep herself busy in a way. She loves being creative. Like, wow. I can see her like creating uh, backgrounds and decor in, in theatre or performing wow. art. How did she make that? So, with this one, you use the 3D pen. Yeah. And you have. Um, uh, the plastic comes from one side and it's melted from the other side wow. and then you can you can manipulate it and maneuver it as you like. The postman keeps bringing more and more and more stuff every week. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you postman. Yeah. <laughs> and the good thing, she she she's very proactive when it comes to art and crafts. She will ask for stuff and if I don't understand her, she will just write it on Google, show me the picture. And we even developed to, she will look for the website where she can buy stuff and then we just, we should, I just buy it and then she can just, and this keeps her busy, keeps the brain yeah. busy. So it's like med medicine. Mm. She needs this. It, it's a need more than a hobby. She needs this and I need to keep feeding her all the skills and whatever she wants to learn. How does NADA communicate and how can people help to communicate with NADA? Yes, so uh, with NADA, um, she can use basic words like water, uh, she, single, maximum two words. Mm. However, with NADA, the way how she learned the language was via videos from YouTube. Mm. So she would use some sentences as she learned them. Uh, so most of the time, she will say what she wants to hear. Like if if I, the, so if I come back home and she's already home with the carer and uh, for example, she will ask me, I got a surprise for you. So that's what she wants to hear. It's mm -hmm. like, have you brought me something? Because oh, I, I started as quick to get her attention that mommy, that mommy is back home and get her out of her room. So that's the, also whoever comes to my house, I used to hand them something to make her come downstairs to get what she is, so as, as like reward to her. Mm. So now she keeps saying, I've got a surprise for you. She does not ask, have you got anything for me, mum? So she just say, says what she wants to hear. Nada has 
a lot of problems with anxiety. Mm. And so she will keep asking, uh, tomorrow we're going to, uh, tomorrow we're going to, uh, which means what's next? Mm. What it might be for next time, for next, for a week, for a day long. So she keeps asking something else. It's very uh, different. It's the semantic. Another has huge difficulties with asking, with questions. Mm. She doesn't know how to answer who, where, how, when. And for this, for example, to make her understand stuff, unlike the sign language, the problem with autism specifically and learning difficulties is the communication, not the language. So mm -hmm. when you have someone who uses BSL, the British Sign Language, the, the, other, the other person knows he needs to tell you something for you to understand his needs. So that's why we use something called PECS, which is Picture Communication Exchange System. Mm -hmm. And this is a huge field, huge field. So we start with one symbol and then we develop to two and then now a next board. It might sound like a lot, but if you break down the way we communicate, we, we communicate a lot, more than we need to sometimes. So, for example, if you need to ask the color, for example, you just have to symbolize it. We started initially with one symbol, like, like bubbles, yeah? And then for me, each time I need to give her, she needs to give me the sign, mm. back the sign, and I say bubbles, and then play the bubbles, blow the bubbles again. Most of the autistic children, I would say, are very visual. Mm -hmm. So this also helps her to learn reading, writing, and understand to differentiate between things. Mm -hmm. For example, here, for example, we do have the symbol. Mm -hmm. However, it's outlined with different color. Right. So if I say water, do I mean... So you understand water, obviously, but do I mean I need to drink water or I want to play in water or, oh, I saw water or, oh, you, someone brought me water. So this explains why you said water. So, uh, so for example, if she comes downstairs, if you hear me saying coming downstairs a lot, so basically my daughter does not like to stay with me in the same layer. <laughs> <laughs> So she likes to be upstairs most of the time to run freely yeah. and keep the darkness during the day and the night during the uh, the light during the night when she's asleep. So that's so she will come downstairs. Doll, doll, what do you want me to buy your doll? Have you lost your doll? Something happened to the doll. So this the the way to differentiate the the term or mm. the symbol helps most of the time. Mm. Communication is beyond language. Unfortunately, not all spaces are made accessible to people with disabilities. What are some of the challenges that you and Nada face on a daily basis? So when you have someone with physical disability, let's mm. uh, say they, they need a wheelchair, what do you offer them? A wheelchair ramp, a lift. My daughter's disabilities or difficulties are not visible. I used various ways. I used a lot of things to make people understand, however, without making her vulnerable. Mm. So you need to find the balance between um, helping others to understand the needs and protecting the child. Mm. For example, one of few things that I use is the sunflower lantern. So, and sadly, not everyone knows what does it mean. So I'm trying to, to make more people understand what this means. So if you see me wearing this, it means I have extra needs or I'm sensible to few things and you should be mm -hmm. uh, careful and cautious about my needs. It might be that um, I can hear but I don't, under I don't understand or um, I cannot handle uh, crowdness and etc. many mm -hmm. other things. My, the outside starts from, from home. Where are we going? How are we going? How long are we going to stay there? Mm. Who are we going to see? And this is not always something in my hands, in my control. So, and when you have someone who's already scared of going out, 
And so she prepares herself, she's shielding herself. She wears ear defenders, mm. but we moved from ear defenders because they were not enough to headphones. So she would wear big headphones with loud video, holding a mobile all the time, and then carrying all what she can bring from home with her so she can feel safe. Mm. With time, as a carer and a parent, and someone who works a lot in this field, if I see someone walking the streets, I know he was on spectrum. You can see from the way they walk. Yeah. With time, um, it's the subtle differences we have. Remember, autism is, is social disability. Mm. So you need an intellectual social support, which is you need another human. Mm. You, you, I wish we could have a robot <laughs> to help the social skills. Mm. However, even the robot will not know if the person is coming my way, where will he be going? Mm. So this is this is this are skills that we learned with time. Mm. This is uh, nature. So we were born with these skills. If we don't need to think twice. Or oh, a person is coming. We don't need to think twice. Or oh, he's going this way. We just know. All what exists is mummy next to me, or the person next to me, holding my arm and counting on me to guide her where we are supposed to go. Uh, yeah, everything is special about yeah. autism. Everything. What does disability mean to you? Disability for me means um, something that you need to think of 24 hours, seven days a week, all the time. I can make anything, like even wearing glasses, can become a disability if you need to wear glasses all the time, everywhere, anytime. Imagine that you need to swim with glasses. Imagine you need to take a shower with glasses. It's something that's part of you. You don't think of it. It's, it's there. You have no control over it. You, you, you try to live with it, but it never goes away. And when you tell someone with disability, I wish you speed recovery, does not make sense <laughs> and when when people keep saying oh I, uh, I pray for it to go yeah in the beginning it's cute and lovely but with, whether with time you accept it or not there is no halfway mm -hmm. you cannot say I love this person but you can't say but it is tiring it is exhausting and it's huge life-changing thing and I must admit, my, our life before autism is nothing like after autism. What can we all do to support people with disabilities? So we have two kinds of people. We have the professional and individuals in the community. Service givers, for example, and anyone on the street. So if you are on the outside or anywhere, don't judge. Think, give yourself two seconds, think before. This person might not be uh, in control of his action or his thoughts. Give yourself two seconds and think, maybe. Always give yourself the thought of maybe this person is. Because the, the problem with intellectual disabilities are not visible. Even mental health, like OCD, anxiety disorder. So. Maybe, always ask yourself, maybe, because there are more people on spectrum than you think. Always ask yourself if you are queuing, if you are buying, if you are anywhere, even if you're working, maybe this person. If I go to the, to the cashier and you cannot scan this one and you, ask, and you tell me, oh, I cannot sell this one, you will have a crash down. You will have a meltdown, you will have a person screaming and not understanding why you keep this to yourself and not giving it back to him. So you make an effort. Ask yourself, maybe this person will not understand. And the, in, if you're a professional, uh, uh, read more. Look more. You know, there are more stuff to read than magazines and, and silly newsletters. Read more, like simple things. In every job, there is a chapter of 
people with learning difficulties and disabilities. Mm. It sh- every professional should should um, learn about this because this this meets everyone. Everyone can can come across disability in some point of his life. Mm. It's anyone, nobody is exempt from it. So, like like I said, inform yourself if you see something like this. Means this person has an invisible, invisible disability, and consider us clients too. We don't vulnerable people. Does not mean poor people. Disabled people are not all the same. Please, it's like human. We we all different. So when you offer a service, make sure you create a space or time slot for people with intellectual disabilities and on a spectrum. If I'm a hairdresser, I will keep one hour a week. It will not harm me. People with, on spectrum are willing to pay like anybody else. May, sometimes, although it's not legal, so they, we pay more than anybody else just to get the service we need. Mm-hmm. So create a space and the opportunity for them to access your service creating space or like time slots once a week or and then you will see people more people will access so you're not gonna lose you as a business you will win maybe more because that's you there's huge demand for this and then you will be uh, there is a win-win relationship between the two sides mm-hmm. so there is a potential uh, disabled people are not hurting they're not uh, extra weight they are part of the weight who is somebody that you would call a bright mind and why so one i met a, li- a lady called temple grinding and it was in some point in my life i haven't met a lot of autistic girls or females mm. in my life it was for me i just wanted to hear someone who's autistic desperately i wanted to see someone living as an autistic woman and when I met her, I realized, uh, it, although you're, it's difficult and different, and some, 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 most of the stuff will not go away, but it's, it still makes you who you are. And the, hap- the happiness frame, it's not the same. So when you, when you see a happy, picture of happiness, the frame can be different might be alone or with a partner or with a job or with a degree or none of it or you know it can be anything so when you see some when he says something this is a happy person you just say he's happy you don't care whether he's rich or poor or intelligent or less intelligent so so she she was happy in her space regardless or whether the other person understood her or not or to look for aspiration and a hope in somehow. I would say even my dad is a bright mind because the way how I accepted the disability and uh, till now very supportive, although that he's not with me in Britain, but yeah. So to know that someone is there with you all the time, it's good. So at least even if you don't give them call, they don't judge you, they don't, you know, if they hear someone screaming, they don't judge you, like I said. So that, yeah, for someone in his age to accept it and just move on, that's very cool of him, you know, like, <laughs> that's how um, I expect people to be, any age. Mm-hmm. What is in you and Nada's bright future? Uh, aspiration. Well, what you aspire for yourself, to be healthy, happy, to do what you like to do. If you want to just lay down in the bed all day, so be it. It's not, you know, I just, I don't, the only thing, uh, I don't want anyone to, to treat my daughter less than anybody else and, and badly. So my daughter is fine. It's just, if, all my struggles till now were about getting her right. The right is there, but getting it is hard. Mm. So being part of part of being a carer, you have to be a lawyer, you have to be a therapist, 
you have to be a counselor. So I would love my daughter to to do what she likes to do. For now, it's art. I would love her to get an opportunity to study this uh, in this field, like painting, drawing, creating stuff. Uh, it's very hard, especially when there aren't a lot of opportunities. You have to create the opportunity yourself, especially now with COVID. Mm -hmm. My daughter's brain will surprise me, with, like always, you know, like she will, she will, she will get, she is a very hard working person. She's stronger. She will get what she wants to do. And be, so being the carer, like any mother, you have to be creative, proactive, mm -hmm. and never take a no for an answer. We, we stop, we need to stop hiding. We need to be there, out there, for people to see. If more of us come out, it, people will see the reality. Mm -hmm. People will create opportunities for our children. And we should empower carers more. So teach them the skills. Because carers tend to isolate. And they're very introvert and insecure and unsure about what's going to happen outside. Mm -hmm. So we need to encourage them, come out, show yourself. And that's why I try to take my daughter everywhere I could. I go to the, I take her to the beach when I can and I, I take her on public transport when I can. Because people need to see it and it's her right, like anybody else. Yeah. And speak up, mm. speak up. A final thought from Ilan. So um, if you see an autistic girl, please uh, initiate the communication if it's possible. Say hi. The other person might not reply or not say anything, but they will appreciate it. Thank you so much to Ilan for sharing her experience. To find out more about Learning Disability Awareness Week, please visit the MENCAP website. Check out the Bright Ideas Project to find out how you can help help this Learning Disabilities Awareness Week. Do you think of...